Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. Florida Sportsman has been leading the fight on the conservation front lines for over 50 years. Harmful Lake Okeechobee discharges have been killing marine life for years, but it's increasingly evident that toxins in those discharges are a threat to human health. It is getting worse. That's what so many of you are telling us about this toxic algae we've been seeing ever since water managers released tons of algae ridden water from Lake Okeechobee. It flows down the Caloosahatchee and now infecting our canals. The Caloosahatchee River and Charlotte Harbor are under attack. Massive man-made discharges of freshwater from Lake Okeechobee into these estuaries are upsetting the delicate salinity balances of our coastal waterways. During the summer, these same discharges are delivering enormous quantities of toxic cyanobacteria from the lake into our coastal water bodies. Cyanobacteria is more than just an environmental concern, it's a human health threat. Cyanobacteria exposure has been shown to cause liver damage, and there's mounting evidence to suggest that long-term exposure may be responsible for early onset Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and ALS. Alzheimer's, ALS, and Parkinson's, just some of the side effects of being exposed to toxins called yeah. BMAAs. Now, the toxins are found in blue-green algae. These neurodegenerative diseases take 10 or 20 years to develop. So you could be exposed now, but not actually come down with the diseases until 10 or 20 years later. Those long-term effects could be liver disease, liver cancer, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. Neighbors who live along this canal say it's concerning. Cyanobacteria is blue-green algae, which comes from Lake Okeechobee and creates really bad blooms throughout the Caloosahatchee River as it makes its way out to tide. Right now, Port St. Lucie Lake remains closed to the public. In January, tests found blue-green algae in the O.L. Peacock Senior Park Lake. I love my state of Florida. There's so many wonderful things to do here with so much variety inside the state on the coasts. But right now, it's a really sketchy time. You know, you have to be concerned about your health. Have you ever, you know, become sick when you're fishing? I took a trip out to Lake Okeechobee for a kayak fishing tournament. I noticed that there was some green algae floating around. I'm like, okay. Later, I started feeling some effects from it. That night, I'm sick. And what about at work? Your offices at Florida Sportsman, we were shut down. Oh, it was ridiculous. The air inside the office was horrible. And again, it's just, it's like one person feels one symptom, one person feels this, one may not get it immediately. But overall, when the entire office is feeling sick like that, it's horrible. And when you walk outside, it's completely green, blue-green algae that's like festering and you can't even get near it. It's, you, have to, you have to wear masks. It's a horrible, horrible feeling to be exposed to that. As a result of your personal experiences, you organized scientists from Harbor Branch Institute to come in and do testing. Um, what made you do that and what were the effects of uh, those tests? Harbor Branch wanted to, to get people in this study so they can find out what is in the air. Nobody knows what's going on, so they want to get information. They want to find out what's really going on in our bodies. And they got the first batch of nasal swab tests back from the first group of people, and it came back with toxic microcystin. Every one of us had it. I mean, think about that for a minute. We all had it. We all know that it's this is a danger. What extent, I don't know. Algae toxins are airborne. That's the headline from a new FGCU study on the blue-green algae impacting our waterways. They even found toxins in places they weren't expecting. You start to see effects in the Caloosahatchee when the, the cyanobacteria starts to stack up in, in the lower part of the estuary and starts to die off and releases all these toxins into the air. It's, it's painful to breathe when you're around these blooms. It smells terrible. TC Palm reporting that researchers found detectable levels of microcystin in, do, in dozens of people's noses in this case. Dr. Lemon, tell us what you saw in your practices here in Stewart, Florida in 2018. Well, as the owner of an urgent care, we weren't seeing the sickest of the sick. Those patients went to the ER. But we did see a lot of patients complaining of respiratory symptoms, coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath. And in fact, I take care of all the lifeguards here in Martin County, and I had to take about 35% of them out of work because of how severe their respiratory symptoms were. What was causing all these ailments? I believe it was due to the toxins from the algae blooms. Um, the blue-green algae releases a toxin called microcystin, 
and the red tide that we had that persisted for several months as well releases a toxin called brevitoxin and I think that was all due to the Lake Okeechobee discharges. You expect to see more of these cases here in the future? I think unfortunately as long as these discharges continue we are going to see more of these cases unless the Army Corps of Engineers decides to reroute the water elsewhere we're going to be stuck. As we've been mentioning, the red tide, the blue-green algae, all affecting water quality, more so inland with the blue-green. And one of the main concerns has been, what about local fishing industry? If we can put people into space, why can't we control something like this? We would like to see more testing from the state to see how our seafood is affected by these algal blooms. Right now, not a lot is known about how long these brevitoxins and the cyanobacteria toxins stay in seafood after the algal blooms clear. A lot of clams, oysters, and other shellfish are harvested from areas that are experiencing toxic algal blooms. We would like to see more testing to see how long these toxins stay in these shellfish so that we can better regulate what's safe and what's not safe to eat. Right now, there's just a lot that we don't know about that. We are only seeing the tip of the iceberg. We also know that some of the neurologic disorders, ALS, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's, seem to be somewhat associated with cyanobacterium and microcysts. We're seeing people with more rashes when they have contact with water. We've been seeing a lot of people with respiratory illnesses, especially this year. I've been seeing a large number of people come in, including friends and family members, that have had difficulty breathing for months. Captains for Clean Water has a great resource available online at captainsforcleanwater.org where you can go learn about all the different impacts of these algal blooms, the discharges from Lake Okeechobee, and the lack of freshwater flow to Florida Bay.